Christian life, it is pretty important to keep our our faith, keep it kind of full. You know, sometimes we feel like we're on low tank. That's why I'm thankful. That's why I'm thankful that we can have the mid service and we have the uh, Sunday service to help us get uh, filled up in our faith and encouraged. Lyric, you have something you want to say? We got civil unrest, we have political unrest, we got quite a lot of other troubles. Faith in Jesus is what we're talking about. It's our spiritual walk, if we will. Um, as a reminder, we have some words in Romans 8, 24 through 25. For we are saved by hope, but hope that is not seen is not hope. For a man seeth, why does he hope for it? But if we hope for what is not seen, we will wait for it patiently. We can also think about, like in our definition for what hope is in Hebrews 11, 1. For faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So we see here that we have faith in those things that are not seen so we can wait patiently. We're in troubling times. We're in very troubling times. We wait patiently to, to see an answer for things that we don't seem to have an answer for. We, we, we finally somehow luckily have a, a, a vaccine. You don't know how accurate it will be. We don't. They even say that. Say that even if you get both doses, keep your mask on. We, we, we waited. We all got off work for two weeks, some for longer and still not work. They said two weeks with masks. We'll be good. Now it's get the vaccine, and we don't even know if it's going to work. Yeah, okay, we have to get, once you get it, you have to take two. Mm -hmm. Two shots. Two doses. Two doses, yeah. Larry, you had something you wanted to say? Uh, yeah. Um, patient is important. Um, you have to wait patiently to wait for Jesus' answer to pray. That's pretty good. You hear that? No, you didn't. You might want to speak up louder. He's talking about how we have to have patience on Jesus for our, to answer our prayers. to have faith in Jesus Christ without it, you don't have that link. We also consider in Ephesians, when we talk about our Ephesians armor in God, we can think about uh, Ephesians 16 and 17, above all, taking the shield of faith, which quenches the fiery darts of the wicked one. And remember to take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. And again, that's our defense against these attacks that begin to uh, eat away at our faith, is to, to be able to stay encouraged by it. Yes, Lyric, you have encouragement? And Talking about helmet of salvation and the sword of the, the 
spirit of God so we can do battle with the devil? That's what the text says, right? Fighting the devil is an ongoing job. Very much as so. a, it's a, it's a, it's a fight to keep our own faith. And lyric, what is the opposite of faith? Do you know what it is? The opposite of faith is God is listening to the devil. Let's think of the devil. Well, it's the opposite. I'm actually looking. I'm looking for the opposite of faith is fear. Oh, fear. In that also. Yep. The opposite of faith happens to be fear, and the Bible continuously tells us throughout Scripture, old and new, to fear not. Fear. So we need to fear not so we can keep our faith, so we can keep our salvation, our connection with God through Jesus Christ and through His blood, and to also be able to wield that shield of faith to defend ourselves, to keep our salvation. Ecclesiastes 12, 13. Let us hear the, uh, the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God, keep his commandments, for this is the duty of man. So we're here, we're supposed to fear God. We're not supposed to fear little coronaviruses. We're not so supposed to fear our circumstances here on life, but we fear the one who happens to control life and death itself. You have to fear God, especially when you sin, because He could do very bad things. No, that happens to be one thing, but I want to encourage you, Lyric, with that, because He said, "We fear God because of our sin. We want we want to do good to God, not only because we're scared of losing out on yeah. things, but we do good to God and we love God and we fear God because of all the mighty good works that He can do." For who he is. And think about in Matthew 10 and 28. Fear not them which kill the body. But are able to kill the soul. But rather fear him that cannot kill the soul. But rather fear him that, that can uh, that destroy both the soul and body in hell. And again, this is God, and this is an idea of being able to honor him. Whatever you fear, you're going to have. You're going to honor, and you're going to, in, in a sense, worship. So fearing coronavirus could be a sense of idolatry. That's quite quite in, important not to fall into idolatry. And you can also think about how Solomon said the beginning of all wisdom was having fear of God. And where you had something to say? Um, you sent me from teachers, yeah. I thought I heard him talking downstairs, so I wanted to find him. Um, um, you're helping your dad today? Yeah. yeah. One of the once, once a month or something like that, and trying to get them to learn things. And the sing and sing. So, um, how do they get intended to listen to God? Do what He says. Follow His Ten Commandments. And if you do the opposite of those things, you would hell. You gotta believe in Jesus Christ. Yes. We know that it died for our sins. Okay, sorry. This was an experiment. <laughs> okay. So yeah, again, I'm talking a lot about fearing God. So where does this whole not to fear thing comes in? First uh, John 4 and 18. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. Because fear hath uh, torment, he hath fear is not made perfect in love. Again, I believe that there is a state in the Christian walk 
where a lot of it happens to be fearing God. Solomon says that's the first step of, of uh, first step, step of wisdom. But there becomes a point where instead of fearing missing out on heaven, you love God for who he is. If that may make some sense. Eric, did you have something to say? No. Oh, you were just fidgeting there. You scared me. And in that, I believe it helps strengthen our, our faith where it's no longer this fear of punishment, but this, this joy and delight of knowing who he happens to be. We can think about Isaiah 41.10. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. And I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Now God does a lot of stuff out of, out of, uh, for, the own, for his own name's sake. To keep his own righteousness, to keep himself pure, pure and holy. You know God is not a liar by any means. And that's one of Satan's ploys as he wants to try to find out God to be a liar. He's trying to prove to others that, look, God has failed at his promises. And he says, I, for my name's sake, for, how to put it, there, there was a time period where someone's name meant a lot. You could know and say, that's a, uh, an upstandable person because they, they, they've kept their promises. They think about the concept of like credit back in the day. You used to be able to just take someone's word for credit. You didn't need a card to represent it. There was a point where that was an important and valuable thing. Nowadays, people will sell their self-respect for five dollars. <laughs> if you see what it is. But God will uphold his righteousness. He is not going to uh, let you down. talking about having righteousness is important. And he went on off topic and we like off topic. We do rabbit trails all the time. He was bringing up uh, Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve, they, they were tricked by the devil. They believed a lie. And you know what, what part of the lie was? He said God's uh, lying to you about this fruit. He's saying you won't, won't. Did he say that you surely die? These are the tricks that the devil has to do this. And he was saying, and very important. He's, he, lyrics tying together this, this particular story here. He was saying that that's why we need to have the, the armor of God. That's why we need that short shield of faith and salvation so we can combat the devil. That was very good. you got to speak louder. Okay. Because he's a little hard of hearing. I'm, I'm kind of worried <laughs> that the camera can't hear me. I'll boost it in editing. Okay. <laughs> I hope. And in, in our faith is in a very, very important thing. It says if we have the faith of a mustard seed, we can tell mountain go and move. Mountains are hard. They're rocky. You, you can think about all those major constructions where they had to go straight through a mountain to make a railroad or to make a to make a, a, a paths for cars. If you want to say. Bible study, okay. uh, since you were talking about uh, yeah. 
can think here in Hebrews 11, which Hebrews 11 has happened to be an entire big chapter on the idea of faith. That's where we got our definition of faith. Now, faith is a substance of things hoped for and evidence of things unseen. But in 11.33, we think, Who through faith subdued kingdoms, worked righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions. Through faith subdued kingdoms. Through the power of God... The whole, the whole nation of the U.S. could be against you. And if it be his will, he can subdue that kingdom. Look, and the example would be in Rome. Did everyone live through that? No, there were Christians who died. But God, through love and not by sword, subdued Rome over a period of time, over hundreds of years, but eventually even getting to the emperor. So this is very important to, uh, to keep our faith because we can even go up against when the whole nation looks like it's against us. Stand for Christ. Yes, Larry? Talking about lions, uh, you um, know um, David? I'm going to talk about David right now. But, yeah. um, um, there was this king that really liked him and uh, um, he made a role which if they don't listen to him, they will get thrown in a line. Then David got thrown in it to the lion's den, but he had faith in God, so he got protected and the king was happy. Okay, that's a good example of faith and if the whole kingdom is against you. Okay, yeah. he's talking about David and the lion's den. He's talking about David. The, the, the kingdom, what did they make a rule? You had to go worship the king, right? Yeah. And he went and he stood against the king's rule. And at that time, the kings could not change their rules. It was set in stone. He said, I will not serve you. Well, I will not worship you. And even the king, you know, was kind of tricked about it. He was kind of friends with them. And kind of felt pretty sad. And even being thrown in the lion's den. God, as it said, and that is what that was. Stop the mouths of lions. That is exactly what that scripture in Hebrews is referencing. Uh, Speak louder. And also talking about David. After Daniel. He, oh. <laughs> Daniel. Sorry. <laughs> I said David. Oh. I said. Oh. Yeah. And Daniel. Daniel. Um, uh, after the day he was still alive, the king was happy, and he also changed the role to listening to the only, the only God. Okay. Get some more encouraging text here. I am encouraged. I have encouraging text. Let's go to Joel 2, 21. Fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice, for the Lord is doing great things. I know through this year, it's been a lot of heartache, a lot of trouble. We got coronavirus, we got politics being politics, we got not being able to understand what half of the science has been saying, we've lived in a lot of fear, but we need to look at some of the good things that God has done. And I believe it's true. God has really He's separated the wheat and the chaff. There's separation within the church of those that wanted to really serve Him in every circumstance and those that wanted to be terrified of, of this particular thing. We got God really getting our focus back on Him. Um, some of this time separated from work I've definitely got some more writing done. That means more ministry, the books. So we got to focus on the things that God is accomplishing and not all the noise that's around us. Here, and also, so, so, Gets 
It says to rest in the Word of God. That's a good thing. Good encouragement. I'm very glad. He's definitely applying what he's been learning. And it's a good recall. That's very nice. Kind of in part of conclusion, I'm going to go to Luke chapter 12. And I'm going to read a few verses. This was originally written for the teens class, and I told a lot of the teens class, and even Lyric could remember, there was homework. And this was the chapter of homework. I'm going to go read some key verses. It was a whole chapter. I was thinking, what's a chapter about not fearing? How can you have something to say about that? I, I, was, I was about to go off talking. I was about to talk about that. No, we're, we're, sit down. Well, Luke 12, uh, 5. But I will forewarn you whom you shall fear. Fear him which shall have have killed have no have killed thy power to cast thee in hell. Ye I say unto you, fear him which against fearing God. Here in Luke 12, we also have uh, 7. But even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not them, and those that are seeking your life. Remember the early church, they were uh, fed to lions, and they were burnt as torches. And so tell them not to fear them, but remember, God cares so much about you, he counts the numbers of hair on your head. I know, but I keep telling him I have a whole lot less now. <laughs> Don't worry, you'll start counting eyebrows. <laughs> what then? Uh, I want to tell you some stuff about faith in those ones. Mary, that's not what we're on right now. Can you sit down? He has faith in God and he got protected from this storm. Fear not them, they are of more value than many sparrows. And God takes care of even the sparrows. Luke 12, 24. Consider the ravens, for they have neither sown nor reap. So they don't even work, is what he's saying. It's like they've done nothing to produce these things. Neither they have storehouses nor barns. I mean, keep it. They weren't out there um, pickling, pickling uh, jelly. Or whatever, you know, jarring jelly and pickling uh, pickles, if you will. They weren't doing that, but yet again, it says, and God feedeth them. How much more are you better than the fowls? Which is funny in our modern sense, fowl. Something bad. But how much more are you that are you to what God cares about you being yourself? Completely separate from the from the animals. Yes, sir. You said the word work. Talking about work. Okay. Yeah. Um. Well, this is this lesson that Chris told me. Kind of talked about work. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the man's name is. Were, but um, this guy, his friend, said to carry him to this uh, uh, gate, and uh, he was wanting money for people to because he couldn't buy food because he couldn't mm -hmm. walk and that these people came and he told God that they told God to heal them and they was able to walk he was running around and jumping mm -hmm. that, that um, was the story that was to have something to do with work because it, they talk about he couldn't Work and he couldn't okay. Work. So he's Larry just brought up the story of one of the times Jesus rose up a lame man. Now he couldn't work, but yet again God provided for him then. Yeah. And eventually Christ restored him. So I guess that works in context. Yet again, God yet again if yeah. the birds don't work and God takes care of them, and God takes care of us when sometimes we can't work or if we're in trouble. And also, and also, the bad thing is people didn't say Jesus did it after it. They say the people that told God to heal him did it. They say he had power. That was bad thing because God did it. Self-control.
four. Yes. Let's go to 12, 28. For when God so clothed the grass, which in, in this uh, today in the field and tomorrow is cast into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O ye of little faith? And also we got Luke 12, uh, 32. Fear not, little flock, for the for it is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. So we worry about how we're going to make ends meet in today when he says that if I clothe the field with flowers, which yet again you emulate all year round with, with, with flowers because of how beautiful they are. He says, what clothing will I clothe you with? If you remember what Vito was talking about last week, he was talking about the clothing of righteousness, the clothing of salvation, putting on the new man that is bought with the blood of Jesus Christ. Isn't that way more beautiful than these flowers or what's laying all this uh, uh, dying body, if you, will, if you will? How much more is God going to meet our needs? And what I have up here on the board, this is something that we all seem to go to quote to. This is what everyone was saying as coronavirus was started, but are we leaning on it still now? 2 Timothy 1, 7. For God hath given us not the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Fear is going to make you stumble. There is more people drunk on fear than alcohol out there today. We need a sound mind. How do we accomplish a sound mind? Power that is within our God and active love towards others. That is what I have for that. And if you want to go up to the computer, we go ahead and play the second video instead of the first. We'll have a little video about how the early